one uh, uh, we'll be adding uh, Dark in a minute too. He's running a little behind for a second. Oh, I will be here. So we'll have another orgy. <laughs> 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 it's appropriate. It's the apocalypse after all. It's what February 29th means, right? Was that? Well, it's the 29th day of February in a 28th day month. That must mean it's the apocalypse, right? <laughs> I suppose. If I hear one more person go on about it being the end of the world, I <laughs> just... <laughs> you know what? I have an answer for anybody who's telling me it's the end of the world. Okay, give me Why your car, your house, and all your money. You don't need it anyways. <laughs> Why would elites bother people like that? Uh, Say what? Why, why are they concerned about a leap year? Well, they're not concerned about a leap year. They're concerned about the solstice this year. The Mayan calendar, we're all going to die! It's not even the end of a Mayan cycle. I can understand if it was like 800 years from now and it's the end of the Katoon cycle, whatever. The Baktoon or whatever the heck it is. Katoon, Baktoon, something term. What? Did you just say you wonder what happens if you put toys in Wikipedia? What? Is that what you just said? You wonder what happens if you put toys in Wikipedia? Yeah. Why would you wonder that? Okay, the belingings must mean that Marcel got the email. <laughs> You're very musical in your email. I know. <laughs> I can't believe they're making a Battleship movie. You told me that a while ago, and I was just... I, I, I swear... Like Transformers means Halo to me. <laughs> it's based on the board game. Yeah. What's next? Uno? Scrabble the movie? Uh, the no, Battleship has nothing to do with aliens. I know. That's because they ran out of enemies, so they had to put aliens in there. Same. They couldn't use communists because Russia fell. We have China? Yeah. Cuba? Well, that wouldn't work. <laughs> Have you seen the super ships China's building? That would work! <laughs> nah. I know China, oh. China's not the Soviet building. Okay. I know Monopoly's getting a movie and so is Candyland. That was pretty lit. I, I, <laughs> you know what? I was thinking with my original sentiment. It's February 29th, must mean the apocalypse. It, that's all movies like that can mean. You know, I, ah. I, I, I did not get the joke they were making in that one South Park where he was seeing everything as shit and they were showing the movies. And, but I'm like, these are all real movies. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, ah. No wonder, no, no wonder nobody's buying what Hollywood's selling. So it's going to basically have the Grandma Boys cast. There you go. That'll work. Alright. Uh. God, you, you, you publicly 
published a very old political... I, I realized I hadn't published it. I actually have one from Saturday I need to get up to. I, I, I like noticed, oh crap, I never published this one. And yeah, you're right, it's like two or three weeks old at this point. Wow, very old. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's better than the one that was done on February on January 28th or whatever that I just got out a week or so ago. Anyways, uh, what do we want to start on? We, we have... God. We got some real what the fucks and what the fuck this... Where's Bob? Bob on yet? Yeah, Bob's here. You gotta thank him for the moxie. <laughs> I know, dude. I need to send some more money your way to get another batch. <laughs> That's right. Bob from the net has the moxie. And anybody who doesn't know what moxie is, that is, that, that is my favorite soda, soda drink, or as they would say in Maine, soda. That's my soda. favorite soda. Soda. <laughs> soda. Uh, we, we don't have ours up here, remember that. Mm. <laughs> You know what I mean when I say that. Uh-huh. And everything's wicked. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Dialectal patterns. Oh, dear. However shall we survive? <laughs> All right, so these are our comments from people, I suppose. Yeah, if we want to go. Um, people are telling us we need, we need the... Uh, apparently, people don't like Mr. Fabulous. We've gotten three don't likes on the Mr. Fabulous bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like people never bother to vote like or dislike, but we've gotten three dislikes on. <laughs> I don't know what else to call that can that uh, persona you were channeling <laughs> towards yeah, the uh, end. The fanboy. <laughs> the only one I could say Yeah. <laughs> Apparently they don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's because it wasn't as fun. They wanted it to be. Uh... I guess genuine, as this comment is saying. You know what? If a, if, if a genuine Apple fanboy wants to come by here and set us straight, they are more than welcome. We've even invited a few over the time. That's why I, I stuck that in there just you to remind You an iOS fanboy is what you mean. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what? If they, I, I, we'll take anybody, but uh, we're not gonna pull any punches. So yeah, you probably need Samuel Tech Geek for the iOS fanboy. Samuel Tech Geek is really an iOS fanboy. He doesn't like his. Uh, he doesn't seem to like his uh, Android phone at all. Hmm. Yeah, but Bit doesn't like Android either. He likes his Web OS. <laughs> I like WebOS over Android, but I still use Android because of all the WebOS went where it went. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll reevaluate WebOS in two years if it makes a good offering. It, I, th I mean, there were so few WebOS devices, and it was such an under-supported platform. The BlackBerry uh, BBX10 is kicking ass on the tablet. I'll say that their update is really awesome. Well, is that the, the, the 2.0? Yeah, and... and uh, we have access to uh, Android apps as well. How, how is the compatibility for that? No, it's uh, running fine. That, 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 that's the really funny thing. That's like getting the Ultra Value Award because it can run those Android apps and other yeah. things. Everybody's and loving it. There's a thing. couple of them uh, that, I, uh, that I liked for uh, remote desktop that I installed. Yep. And uh, got Dolphin Browser off of Android as well. So, I mean, it, 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 it has a runtime for it. And I also got a, a, a specialized application manager just within the Android runtime that can manage it. So that's pretty, it's really, really sophisticated. How do you like that finger gesture browsing from Dolphin? <laughs> well, that's okay. I haven't used it as, you know, that extensively yet. I mean, I've only, it's only been on there for two days now, so I haven't had much time. But I've heard so much about Dolphin browsers, so I said, okay, I'll just... Yeah, uh, well, Dol okay, Dolphin as a file browser is great. As a web browser, uh, he, I, I don't know. Um, we're not we're not talking from the KDE land where Carter was the web browser, the file manager. This is a completely different product. Uh, I, I know that. 
That's the thing. I love Dolphin the file browser that's in KDE. I'm not so sure about Dolphin the web browser that really, like you say, has nothing to do with Dolphin. <laughs> yeah, well, if I remember correctly from the market, it's called, like, uh, what's it, Dolphin HD or something. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I made, I downloaded that once on, on uh, Android, and I was like, oh, yeah, no. oh, Dolphin, not to be confused with Dolphin. Okay. <laughs> I was like annoyed with the app then. <laughs> well, at least it's doing better than handhelds. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it, well, smartphones is killing those. I honestly am wondering how many other people are going to follow what BlackBerry's doing there and just incorporate in, um, like you're saying, Android app support and stuff. Because with Alien Dalvik and it's like it's easy to do, and it's just a job runtime. Really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It has its own runtime, but not only that, they're they're importing them legitimately uh, as fast as they can. Right. Have, and it, it's and it, them. it's real yeah. easy to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean that that's one of the things that uh, they're doing when they're for the open sourcing of WebOS. They're making sure that it's optimized to be compatible with doing right. that. WebOS will as, right. WebOS will. Uh, Adopt a new kernel, uh, right? Modification, basically, to the more traditional that Android used, rather than its proprietary Linux kernel. And Which then it will then it will ex basically accept all the driver models. And the wishful thinking at that point is, well, as well, well, wishful thinking, it's going to be time that once the driver models are accepted, WebOS can then just be installed on Samsung or Motorola or everybody else because yeah. the drivers are compatible at that point. I was going to say they basically want to make it so pretty much whatever Linux will run on, they pretty much want to make WebOS run on. Which is almost every piece of hardware on the market today. So. Precisely <laughs> Yeah, with the exception of very few things that have gone out of their way to make Linux not run with them. So. Yeah, the thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm actually feeling a bit confident. They've really stepped up to the plate and are delivering. Yeah, Rusty will say it's Meg Whitman, and I'll leave it at that. I, yeah, I, I agree. She's. I think she made a damn good decision with that, and, and she, I think she specifically targeted Android, um, and, and like that model, but is trying to play on the weaknesses of Android uh, and make up that difference. But is it really open source? You know, <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, we'll we'll see what happens there. That even if they don't go full open source, which they should go open source, but it, it honestly, because HP is retaining the patents and they're, they're going to have an interest in defending WebOS, it will make an interesting situation, especially, uh, and this is something else we're getting in, we're kind of jumping over into the Google end here. Google has screwed up with the Motorola <laughs> thing. Uh, there's no other word for it there. You know, they're, they're going to get a carrier. They're going to get everything they need to make a flagship Android device to, uh, and still have Android be on multiple devices and become a de facto standard. But they're going, oh, well, we're going to put this firewall in where uh, we don't talk to each other. So Motorola will not be able to optimize its hardware for Android because that's fair. Like, Bullshit. That's the whole point of buying a phone company. If you're not going to do that, why buy them? What's the... <laughs> it's, it, it really was not a being simple. They're going... This oh. is what we want things based on, though. So you're going to say that again, Bob. It was real bad. Yeah. Sorry. Um, basically, what they need to do is, okay, here's the model we want, this the specs we want. You know, what they've been doing with the Nexus phones, essentially. Here's the base model. You guys figure it out after that. Right. Well, it, uh, they're, it's because everybody's trying to make Google the big bad monopoly. So they're, they they're, are. they're becoming the uh, Microsoft of the 90s, man. Yeah, sure. no. I, I, made, I honestly made a comment. Uh, I, I can't say what the project is because it's a bunch of confidentiality crap. But I made a, prom, a comment to three developers in the last week uh, where we were talking about, okay. I, in a free open market, I don't see Google getting dislodged any time this decade. However, you remember when Microsoft got labeled a monopoly in the 90s and we had this little, uh, it's like, uh, like, you know, if all of that happens, we may have forced 
liquidation of Google <laughs> through intervention, in which case, you know, wait, okay, so we're, we're basically hedging our bets for if the government steps in and forces a reshuffling, we're not screwed. Because <laughs> it's a real possibility with how things are going right now. <laughs> I, I don't know. Do, do you think this is going to be as bad as what happened with Palm as a result of doing this type of firewall with the Google thing? I don't, I don't know. Uh, Palm had uh, different problems, actually. I was going to say Palm's issues were more from a developer side. <laughs> <laughs> Financial problems. Uh, all exactly. Well, I, I was referring to earlier when like Palm originally started licensing the Palm OS, but they... Oh, are you going back to the Trio days? Yeah. But it was actually before the Trio days, because Trio was wound up running Windows. I don't remember there was a Palm, Palm OS in the Trio. Yeah, but the but I, I'm thinking of the Trio that was in the late 90s, early aughts, that, that was running. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. But I mean, back on point about getting a fanboy, I guess this M, M4KK393, they just, they're going to need to have somebody... I guess if they know some or seem as a geek, if, if this or this wants to get them, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I've heard it's, the geek rag on Android though before, uh, but if it's a, if it's a must about uh, you know being forced to choose, I can't, I can't. My, my thing of it is, is I would still argue against iOS if it were just those two operating systems and no one else. Uh, I have real problems with with. with uh, iOS. At least, at least I can mod Android and, and get it uh, relatively like I wanted to legally. And yes, I could jailbreak iOS, but then Apple's always on on the heels of, of jailbreakers. And, and they're to... always trying to break jailbreaking or force an update or or something for everything else. It, it, honestly, you know, to quote a a, a, a fanboy, you know, because people like to pick on Android for the task killer, you know, being one of the most popular apps. It's like, if you need a task killer, you obviously did it wrong. Yeah, okay. If you need to jailbreak it to do features that most of your users want to do, it's the same fail. You know, that's... I think it is the most devastating thing to be able to have the operating system choose which application has priority. I, I, I would, it, it, to me, it just does an absolute disservice for memory management to say that I have a working spreadsheet open and let's say I don't know quite what the footprint or the memory footprint of this new application is going to be. iOS will decide and, obviously, and just automatically remove uh, the spreadsheet from memory. And without, if the programmer didn't write into the app a save feature and all that other task oriented stuff within the, that appropriate sandbox, it's, it's game over. And to me, that is the most atrocious behavior that I can, that I, I just cannot tolerate. It is a, it is as RIM basically stated, and I put on Twitter today, you know, RIM is interested in, in, in making tools, not toys. Why, as the industry as a whole seems to be interested in making tools into toys. <laughs> I love that, that advertisement that RIM's starting to do now. I'll tell you, once they get that BBX10, that's ex I'm very impressed with it so far. And I've, I've been pushing concurrency on it, and it's, it's pretty pretty badass. Well, at least it's doing far more better than Nintendo and Sony. <laughs> but this, I just missed my post on Twitter. I said, I swear. They're, they're rim headed on the nail. They're making tools, not toys. The iPhone essentially is now just. It's the new Game Boy. It is right. All the, if Nintendo wants to get their back in the game, make a smaller Nintendo. I said this on Twitter. I said, all Nintendo needs to do is take the DS and put a phone app on it, and it's game over for the iPhone. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. The fanboys oh. will follow the shiny. Well, I was, I was, I mean, of course, I was being funny and sarcastic, but seriously, <laughs> if you have a gaming platform, essentially what the iPhone is, you and you already have a company that is dominant, uh, very dominant, Dominant game, man. Add a couple of Farmvilles in there along with the existing <laughs> Nintendo uh, game showcase, and, you, and you're going to get the iPhone run for its money. Well, they do have Disney-like characters with Mario and the rest of them. 
Exactly. They could, fly, they could call it like a MeWe or something. You know? What? <laughs> the MeWe. People would go for it, I swear. It would get well, I, can, I, I can just see it now. Get your Wii U's and your MeWe's. MeWe's, Wii U's. I can be good. <laughs> most iPhone users, they're, they're, what are they mostly doing? And I'm going to do this. I'm going to the mall, and I'm going to start videotaping and, and serving. It's all huff and puff and fluff, man. Let me ask a question. What, what, what age are they? Because, like, the, I, I see two groups of iPhone users and not much in between. I see the... Teenagers, and I see the Apple people, uh, and I don't really see an in between. You know, it, it's it's the third, it, it's the ten to twenty two, maybe twenty four year olds. You know, so, you know, it's like they haven't actually moved into the adult world yet. And then it's the I'm an Apple person people. It's <laughs> you know, I I would even. I venture to say this, I've had my BlackBerry uh, 9810 with OS 7.1 on it. I have a lot of friends, uh, Houston is, a, is big in energy. I have a lot of friends with BlackBerrys with OS 6 still on it. And OS 7, even OS 7, I just forget 7.1 smokes OS 6 in performance. I, I, I mean, I kiss night and day. And I, and I, I would even adventure, and I've done it myself, that I can access, you know, serious applications mail, FTP, um, uh, other type like an editor that I've got on there as well, uh, and, and SMS if I wanted to, and access it far faster in task switch, far faster on my BlackBerry 7.1 than the iPhone 4S could ever dream to get and keep up with, period. And, I'll, and I will stand true to that statement. I can navigate that BlackBerry and get all my important applications to get business done and it'll execute it and, and get it completed far faster than an iPhone 4 is. Well, and, and that's honestly when you're doing actual work, the ability to multitask and despite the fact that, you know, we, we don't want to get bit off on the multitask rant again, but uh, <laughs> the reality is even when you're doing one thing at a time, it's the ability to switch gears between those one things and put that's them right. on hold that it's it, right. You can you can install an app and, and let it go. I'm talking about the old OS. We're not even talking about the QNX based system. The 9810 is running their old Java based OS, or the, 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 it has the Java make, you know runtime. And you can install an app and do something else. The app will continue to load. Now, and when it's finished, it'll ask you to reboot. But it it can do many things and keep all my like my like if I use a spreadsheet app right up there. It'll keep it up, and I can go back to it extremely fast, and I don't lose anything. No lag whatsoever. The, 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 the one thing I am going to want to see, and I don't know where, where y'all stand on this, as we start using these um, slate and phone devices more for productivity, I, I forget the processor. They're going to need a decent amount of RAM on them because right now they're really lacking in how much memory is on them. I really want to see them have uh, iOS with its lacking. Uh, um, I think. Oh, 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 the industry as a whole is lagging, but the iOS devices really lag. Most of the Androids have like uh, one gig or two gigs of RAM. They ha it depends on the league of the device. They have between half a gig to a gig. I don't know any that have two gig. Two gigs what I want to see pretty much become the de facto standard. I'd love to see high-end ones with four gig. But I was going to say, the only device that it might have it is probably like the Asus Transformer Prime that might have like 2 gigs. That's the only one I can think of that might recently come out that might have it. Yeah, I don't know the specs on that one. But all the other ones, yeah, they're, they're capped at a gig. And I'm like, you know, a gig was a lot years ago, but today that that's a little limiting if you really get a good workflow going. And that is where we're starting to shift these devices. So it's like twelve megabytes. That's how much the Apple iOS devices have in them right now. <laughs> and we wonder why. You know what? Try finding that spec on Apple's site. It's like they give other specs. They talk about their GPU. They talk about their pixel count on their screens. 
Try finding out how much memory is in the iPhone or the iPad. But that's what you just said, Rusty. That's exactly what they're catering to. The rendering, the pixel on the screen, it's all geared for visual gaming. Yeah. And, that, and, and, it's, and the iPad, the iPad 2 and its dual core GPU is specifically targeted. Well, and you wonder why those devices have such a hard time running HTML5 applet things. That's why. The, the bottom. You know, tat, tat on uh, the QNX system for BlackBerry is now starting to brag with all of their layer UI implementation on the QNX system. And, and that's pretty impressive. I'm starting to see YouTube videos taking the uh, playbook now with, with the new QNX upgrade uh, against the iPad 2 on, on uh, visuals. I don't have any games on, on my. Uh, that. And, I, and I will admit right now, my BlackBerry 9810, the games, <laughs> is a joke on, on, on that thing. I you mean play. you can't play your Angry Birds in HD? Man, I can't play my Angry Birds. <laughs> but they're going to need to get a, you know, I see them a big, but I'm going to tell you right now, if, if profit is going to be their argument, I, I mean, it's it's easily a moot point when it comes to, when people say, oh, the masses are buying it all and so much money. The same thing happened with Microsoft, but yet the Apple position back then was, well, that's garbage. And people like to buy garbage. That's the mass. I mean, that's what mass people like to buy is just the everyday Joe. Well, see, now they're the everyday Joe, which which is now what is the argument going to be? Either you're going to be a hypocrite or you're going to eat, eat crow. I mean, that's... Uh, there, there, there's an Apple conversation you and I need to have at some point, and it's regarding the changes that happened between Snow Leopard and Lion, and it's exactly along those lines. Because all the sites I see in favor of those changes and all the signs are talking about making it more everyday man and all the ones that are against it. Why did you make it less? It was so much better before! <laughs> I could get stuff done. Now I can't get stuff done. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they're trying to put more games on the Mac. It's impossible. Well, this I this that's exact because the population is not going from the Mac to the iPhone. It's coming from iOS to the Mac. No, and yeah. No, the, 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 uh, the high income corporations will ignore the Mac completely because. There's no profit in Mac gaming. None. They'll just go straight to PC where the real profit is. That's well, where I have perhaps. To play. But 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 there's a we can't ignore that there's a lot of games that are on the iOS platform that I know and this is a Rusty and I discussed this in another show, is how is that gonna converge? Because I think Microsoft has the right idea of the gate and having a full blown OS that transcends devices. Whereas Apple cannot rely on iCloud to bridge the gap between iOS and OS X if they hope to bring that powerful app world over to it, Mac. Yeah, it's going to blow up in Apple's face. It's not going to work. Uh, basically, the developers are going to say the same thing I'm going to say. You don't have a gaming market. We're going to go to Windows. But then they're going to say, but it's harder to convert. And they say, I don't care. We want money. We don't care if it's going to work. Uh, you know money. what? Honestly, um, they would have an easier time conver uh, converting monetarily-wise Linux than they would OS X at this yeah, point. Yeah, there's no profit in Linux gaming either. And they'll just say, screw it. We don't care about our uh, developers. We want them to work to the bone to the bone to make us money. So put it to the windows. Right. But what I was talking about before is that there, Apple has a larger demographic that has, has grabbed iOS uh, in numbers that the Mac side has never even come close to trying to achieve in, in the entire Apple history. Yeah, what was that metric we looked at the other day? They've sold yeah. more iOS devices in the last yeah, few so years than Macs in the last 10. Right. <laughs> but I, I, contrary to what many people would like to think, a tablet is not post-PC post anything. I mean, it's a quarter of a form factor. But form factors aside, how are they going to bridge? They're, Apple will not want to put all its ducks, especially in the iOS, which has already a hard time dealing with things and, and an argument of simplicity and all this, when it comes down to real productivity and, and wanting to get things done and what we expect in cubicles and, you know, and people doing everyday business. <laughs> this is why you and I need to have that argument, because I'm going to... How can, you, how can you have iOS as your main producer when it can't even, when it has a hard time even doing concurrency? I mean, people like the iPad 
as a separate thing. It collects dust on the coffee table, and they can pick it up and do a, a, cool, a few cool things here and there, but it's not the meat. And when it when the day comes that it now needs to be the meat, how are they going to address that? I don't. Do they emulate iOS now and OS 10? The, I mean, all of the ARM. I mean, are we going back to the Rosetta days and, and, and bringing all the ARM stuff over? Or is OS 10 and the chips eventually going to leave uh, Intel and we're going to go back and we're going to be looking at ARM? I, I, I think uh, the industries in the next five years is going to be leaving Intel just because there's some real... <coughs> The bug type. Uh, there's some real decent ARM offerings coming in the next year. The Windows is going to be supporting ARM. I, I can honestly see the market getting flooded with pure ARM-based devices for desktop devices. It, it, it's uh, it, it's not going to happen in the next two years. We need at least one or two more cycles of Moore's Law, but they're coming. There, there's going to be a wave of them in 2014. Followed by another wave the next year with another cycle of Moore's Law. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it's and, and, and that and if that's the case, then Apple has less to worry about. If if desktops truly uh, get we we have desktop power on ARM architecture, which I don't, I, which I think is totally achievable, uh, and then that would that would put Windows in a position of massive catch-up then at that point, because then iOS can just transfer its... Well, that, 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 that is exactly why Windows 8 is going to be supporting ARM. Yeah, they, they need it, and I think that's why Microsoft is, is playing both sides. They're not quite yeah. sure. You know, Intel's going to keep up with the Ultrabooks, and let's, let's face it, business is probably going to stick with and keep x86 alive for many years to come. Um, so we'll see, but I, this I just you, we interrupted you. I like to always hear what your insight is. On, it's on just that, that the, the gaming developers are still going to go straight to Windows because that's where most of the customers are on video gaming on computer. Mm -hmm. So if my, Apple thinks that they can get any of the gamers onto their onto their Macs from iOS, they're they're smoking some real shit. Well, this it's not just that most game devs. Do DirectX. They don't do OpenGL or OpenGLBS. Yeah. That the gaming industry standard, for the most part, on the PC, and I use that term loosely, is DirectX. Yeah, no, it's because it, Xbox 360. Yeah, and it's like that project, it Microsoft's it. Xbox DirectX takeover was. <laughs> Uh, a success. Uh, now there is there is a a chink in that armor in that there is a open implementation of DirectX that's actually being pretty damn uh, compatible. So if that is this illegal? Or yeah, is yes. It's it, 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 it's like it's like the Wine slash Darwin project that allows you to run. Windows stuff, uh, emulate the Windows dill oh. calls on Windows and stuff. It, it, it basically recreates DirectX. It, it's a clean room recreation. It is legal. It doesn't violate patents. And if that gets a little more developed to the degree like Wine and Darwine and Crossover have gotten developed where, I mean, 95% of the time you can run the Windows app on Linux and Unix even though you're not running Windows, then that will be less of an issue and it won't matter that the gaming industry is based on DirectX. Right. It, but they won't change their development model for the reason this this is saying. It'll just be, oh, that works over here now too. Well, I, I'm going to agree with this idea in saying that like, I know many people always try to forecast the game, you know, PC gaming is dying. I, I always say it's kind of like this niche thing. It may, it may never be as big and powerful as consoles. Uh, but it's kind of like those guys that, that, that I like and the people who like to work on the, you know, the 1960s cars and ramp up the horsepower and, and go out there, uh, like, especially he, in Houston on West Timer. He, here's and, the and weird thing. Uh, so here's the really weird market. thing about it, Bit. Even though it's not as large a market, the console market in, it is larger, but in profitability, the PC market, especially in paid MMORPGs, is actually far more lucrative because you get 100% of the subscription base going through you as opposed to going through third-party vendors like Xbox Live or other systems. Well, I like to help me. I like to, well, 
go ahead. I was gonna say, I like the, what he said about the MMOs or whatever. Uh, it's funny, it's that the top selling game is uh, World of Warcraft, and that's cross platform. I know. <laughs> go well, ahead. Let me ask you this. I know, like, Nintendo um, uses some proprietary APIs for their visuals. Um, I, obviously, Xbox uses the, the uh, DirectX. What the PlayStation uses what? Is it uh, it's open by the LES? It's kind of like a bastardized version of it, but yeah, and, 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 and it proves honestly that if Microsoft wanted to make that run on Linux, they could because the PlayStation is Linux based. Right. It, now, I'm weak in this, you know, this area, so I rely on you guys. Where are um, con where where does uh, I guess um, Steam? Which I guess is like this repository of, of gaming that was big oh. on PC gamers. It, and, and it's basically Steam I mean, is an app store for games. Is basically okay. what it is. So what happens with these DirectX games that are all part of Steam network that want to run on Mac? They don't, or does Steam pay for porting, or, or does it get subsidized to, to go over the network, or? Or, or how does that how does that occur? Well, a, a lot. Okay, some games, even though they're they're based on DirectX, they they continue to develop their OpenGL engine, so the game is dual support. Uh, and those games in Steam, you know, they they give the OpenGL version on the Mac. Uh, I was say, but if they don't, they use they probably use something like Cider. Right, and, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but 100% of the Steam repository isn't available to the Mac version of Steam. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, I, I can say that having the liquid cool PC right <laughs> to the right of me, that the Mac demographic never has been that mentality. The Mac demographic is, I don't want to touch my computer, I don't want to open it. If I open it, ooh. You know how did, because we've lost the old days of, of, of where Steve Jobs would say our professional customers like to do X, Y, and Z. That didn't exist anymore. So if Macs are more and more insular and closed to the geekiness of wanting to beef up hardware, they're never going to capture the PC gaming industry. And is the Mac demographic willing to pay? 50, is it fifty bucks when new games come out? You know, like a first-person shooter and stuff like 50, that. Uh, 50 to 60. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in some cases, it's high as 100, but yeah. You know, like they're in the shooting, you know, birds across things and, and killing pigs or whatever. Well, it, you know, it's it, since we've got off on the Mac demographic, I can give you a story that would make your head hurt from somebody who tries to get work done on a Mac. But I was in a computer store actually earlier today. Uh, and uh, so you know, we, we were having the conversation over the uh, multiple desktops and stuff, and like this this uh, diehard Mac fan lady, she's like she's she's basically drunk the Kool Aid and just convinced that Mac is the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, ma made the comment, you know, what would you do with that? Why would I need multiple desktops? And, and, and she's just like, what? She's like, that's a useless feature. Yeah, I've always, I've always hated the whole thing where <laughs> that if, the Mac, if the Mac doesn't have it now, then it must not be, it must not be good. But all of a sudden, if it shows up in the next iteration of OS, then oh, it's it's the, it's the second coming. You know, it's it's. it's so, so, can we tell people that use expose that the virtual desktops are useless? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, because, uh, you know, the, the, all of the multiple desktops, I was used to back in, uh, God, what was it, 1998, 99? When Red Hat Six came out, and I, I just love stacking those. Yeah, those it took. It, 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 it took. Uh, when did Matt get that? I want to say Tiger. Or was it? Or what? Was it Tiger or was it um, Panther? Um, it, it was in Leopard. It was in Leopard. Okay. Had a third-party option. I, I said I, Panther. The sorry. Most yeah. Customizable fun I've ever had with OS X was with with Tiger. I, I I have videos where I made Tiger look like Windows. And all kinds of shit. <laughs> how, how dare you? Yeah, yeah, you know that. That's just, I'm like, why? Why do you I, want I, to make it look like Windows? It's a split in that community because I introduced the concept of Frank, you know, Frankintoshes, where 
you, you take the old power PCs and that used to be maybe 800 megahertz and turn them into dual core 1.6 gigahertz. And up in the boards, and, well, what the hell are you doing? Why do you need to do that? Well, hello. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then again, I can't say much, but I have joined your camp. I do have a Mac now. So. <laughs> yeah, hang on a minute. <laughs> Well, go ahead on that way. I'm changing the title. Yeah, he 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 he, he he's yeah he he he's committed the sin. To the dark side. <laughs> I, I will defend OS 10 to the cows come home. Uh, I mean, for productivity, but you know. If Apple really wants to get into the uh, hardcore gaming departments, I mean, they literally going to have to open themselves up. Yeah, I agree. Uh, oh, I, I just noticed we suddenly jumped forward about 300 episodes because this was supposed to be episode 34, and I didn't delete the three before typing the four, so it's episode 334. Oops! Yeah, so are we going to last season's convention, apparently? <laughs> yeah, hang on. New Fisker, or where did you go to that? Apple, uh, what? No, uh, screw that. I hate, I hate dealing with all the cult people. Um, I got uh, one of my customers that was upgrading with to a Mac Pro, so I just got a MacBook that was fairly well updated. Yeah, you know, that, that's really funny that you bring that up, because the primary reason people like you and me wind up getting Macs, it's the reason... It's we have to. Yeah, no, yeah, it's because we have a client that has moved into the Apple Kool-Aid and to, to, be, to hey, work hey, with hey, them... Not you. Yeah, we, we, you, bet you have an immunity to the Apple Kool-Aid because you remember the old Apple. Okay, hang on. Let me change the title to the main story for <laughs> no, the next. I'm gonna hit so so. Okay, you have a MacBook. Is it a MacBook Pro or just a MacBook? Yeah, it's just a regular MacBook. Uh, it, 2009. You know, just got. Start learning Automator and uh, Apple Script, and um, and uh, if you don't like the doc and all that, um, there's many many ways of getting applications up and running extremely quick and managing your desktops. I was gonna say I'm a little out of practice seeing how the last one I owned was an iBook. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 yeah, Dark, they have changed a lot since then. They're not as backward as they used to be. In some ways, of course, you're running. W w uh, w uh, which OS oh, ten? Snow. Yeah, you're 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 lucky. You have Did more. You know, my my eight year old son still has a G four iMac that runs Flash. Flawlessly. You know, do you know his school demands he has these damn math things uh, that the school will, has him practice on that require flash. And it's ironic, he, his his computer doesn't know shit about HTML5, but you put flash in front of it and it's no problem. And this is this is a G4 iMac running running his his school's you know flash math. Uh, programs and, and and it's and it's funny you know he I ha I my four year old son gets on there as well because they have bunk things yeah so I have to lock out the dock and all that stuff because one one day we learned the hard way that you know shit was all over the place and we had all kinds of burn folders and you know it was just nuts so <laughs> we had to we had to lock out the system and, and so my eight year old son is starting to learn ter you know terminal. So I can teach him how to open up applications. Yeah, you know what? I, I, even though we have moved beyond the need in modern GUI computing, unless you're doing stuff where you just need command line to really need command line, it's a damn useful skill to have because if you really do learn how the computer is thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a fundamental base skill. I, I really think you should start everybody with a text. I thought he's, he's, he's getting the hang of it. So he's starting, he's starting to... Like today, he was in term, terminal, and he was asking, okay, how do you do it again and open an application? And there's a Dr. Seuss application that we leave in the dock for my four-year-old that is, is, is running on a, um, that emulation for OS 9. This is an OS 9 app, yeah. but you can still run through Tiger. So it sometimes really gets 
to be a resource hog, and you have to exit out of it. So we just we forgo all of the UI crap and go straight to terminal and kill it. See, he's learning resource management. That's yeah. an important so, skill. <laughs> God forbid if you tell anybody that is drinking the apple Kool Aid to use a terminal. Though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. I love, I, I love it even more than when I the days of operating in DOS. Yeah, now, yeah, you, yeah, you know yeah. what? I, I, I learned DOS first, but there is something about a Linux or Unix terminal versus the Windows DOS prop terminal. It's just it, it's something something is different. You, you feel welcomed as opposed to, yeah, what are you doing in terminal?